Good afternoon, everyone. U.S. inspectors may be at risk of lowballing the health of the U.S. corn crop. I wonder if that's a message to reassure the markets as we see the lowest corn emerged ever in the history of the United States as kangaroos freeze in Australia when Al Gore visits. And let's take a look at the sun choke, a beautiful flower with a delicious root. And on the subject of summer planting, trueleafmarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet, the sponsor for tonight's video. You'll find that link in the description box below to give yourself the gift of organic and heirloom seeds. So much flooding occurring in our crop zones. The new term for Oklahoma with so much rain is soak Oklahoma. Even in the Tulsa media, they're talking about Oklahoma to describe rain conditions that are 2.5 times the normal for May. Seems to be a trend globally with all these rains increasing, but the story of the day has to be this here. Corn market at risk of misunderstanding the United States Department of Agriculture's condition scores this coming Monday on June 9th. You're going to see some movements in the market, whether it be up or down, depending on what the inspectors go into the fields to find and then give a forecast as to emergence and health of crops across the United States. Now, one set of analysis says they might be at risk of lowballing the health of the corn crops. And why might that be? Well, with the lowest emergence ever in the history of the United States, they're going to have to go in and just take a small sampling, a sector, if you will, of the entire whole. So let's say there's 100 acres that have emerged over here, but there's 3,000 acres behind it that aren't emerging at all. They're still going to use the 100 acres that's emerged as their forecast. So it even says it in the article that they might have to make some subjective assumptions at this point about the health of the crop. And again, the complete inverse of the first statement was these observers, if they give this, hey, it looks healthy, that is going to give a false impression into the market that that condition reflects the entire crop of corn, when in actuality, it would just be 100 acres out of 3,000. So we got both directions going here in the article. They're explaining it. Now, a really good graphic included in this article here was the U.S. corn emerged on June 2nd versus anything back to 1999. Now that dotted red bar on the left, that's how much corn is emerging currently, less than 50% of the entire crop in America. And the yellow arrow that I put in there shows the worst ever before. But then prior to this, they've only had three exceptionally bad years. 1994, going back to 1968, and then back into 1938. So as we're standing here, that red line is the thin red line for your food price. So if you're more of a numbers person, you like to see it visually, the worst on that chart was 73% in 2011, and here we are this year at 46%. More rain on the way, floods decimating downriver Missouri, Arkansas, and they're going to spot check crops, yield for the United States coming. Is it to save markets, not spook markets, drive markets? Who knows? But wait till Monday, we will find out. Now, since you're going to be responsible for growing more of your own food, here is a local North American delicacy, Sunchokes. Links are in the description box below along with trueleafmarket.com. Cold weather foraging, and this is what it's all about. Taking a wild species and bringing it in and being able to farm it. Something nutritious and something bandits would walk right by and not even know it was a plant that you could eat. It looks more like a flower to me. But Mother Earth News has a full rundown on how you can grow this, how you can cook it, how you can store it, how you can save it for seed. But it's an incredibly beautiful yellow flower. And what you're looking for is the tuber, the root growing underneath that looks very similar to ginger. But when you cut it up, the nice, white, flavorful, mellow flesh inside there. There are hundreds of recipes for this. I didn't know how widely it was eaten across the United States. They actually switched from this, which you could grow yourself, and other things that we need to now buy from a market. But this used to be a major self-grown food sustenance plant across the United States all the way into the Great Depression. Al Gore arriving in Australia right to freezing kangaroos in some of the coldest conditions ever experienced in the country with record snows. But this is what the kangaroos are jumping around in June 5th as the Southern Hemisphere descends into its winter. 
jumping over to Europe, no pun intended, massive cyclonic low landing on the French shores. And yes, that's going to head inland and anything standing in its way in terms of French crops is going to be smashed to the ground as these 100 mile an hour plus winds are going to blast through. And they're still looking at 30 to 50 mile per hour winds as this thing enters Central Europe all the way over to the Czech Republic. Close up of the same satellite imagery here as you can see it making landfall. So again, emerged crops, especially in France, Wonder what's going to happen to that as these 100 mile per hour winds blast through their corn production as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. You're going to have to grow your own food, so I highly encourage you to take a look at True Leaf Market's growing guides as well as the sun choke. And I'm going to start featuring more Native American species that you can grow on your own. And these are also found and have been transplanted over to Europe. So anything that we can find in between there that can help us sustain and survive through these times.